Hello, my name is John Cornicello and I welcome you to my series of live interactive photo conversations. You can check out the schedule at cornicello.com slash conversations for dates and times of upcoming shows. Uh, some of the guests coming up are Aaron, Ellen Friedlander, Michelle Dunmarsh, Teresa Meyer, and Stephen Johnson. Uh, you'll also find links to previous conversations there. Uh, my guest today is Roman Lorenz. Roman is a self-taught photographer who works in the 4x5 film format, does his own wet darkroom printing, giving him total control over his images, including spotting and mounting. Please welcome Roman Lorenz. Welcome. Thank How you. How are you doing today, Roman? I'm a little bit nervous because uh, speaking is not my forte. <laughs> That's okay. We'll, we'll make it easy for you. I guess first thing I should say for people who aren't familiar with darkroom printing, what is spotting? <laughs> for people who haven't worked with film. So you want to tell us about, about your darkroom work, Roman? Um, yes, well, I started very early as I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. I received a little cheap camera my first communion um, and uh, it was very difficult to find any places to develop film so I buy the book and uh, learn from that and start developing in my uh, restroom uh, film. <laughs> <laughs> Where was this? Larger. It was in Poland. Poland, nice. Yes and um, also I learned later that uh, my grandmother who got the camera from me was uh, Jewish. So I was like growing in both culture, Catholic and uh, Jewish culture. So it was, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, but photography was um, always passion from beginning. And I decided that uh, that's the only I can do. And <laughs> unfortunately, I, I can do very little thing, <laughs> no other skills. <laughs> I, I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Take the camera out of my hand and I don't know what to do. I can't even nail the nail <laughs> to the wall. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, uh, the process is for me, the first time I did is such a magic uh, and the hands on it uh, and the involvement in it, uh, it's and the silver gelatin print has such a magical quality that still with me to today. So when did you get your first four by five? Uh, four by five, I have a right away too. Only the problem was in a communist country, you could not get four by five film. So I make uh, negative from glass. I still have one survive with me here. Wow. So I still have it. So glass plate yeah, negatives. I, yeah, I, it was an interesting process to. Um, so I, I even the camera I received it, it just broke, and after first film, it was such a cheap Russian copy or something. Uh, and um, then I used most of it four by five and use make glass negatives. Mm -hmm. For people who are new here, this is an open conversation. You can type into the chat questions or you can unmute and ask questions. Uh, you know, feel free to be part of the conversation. Um, when I think of your work, Roman, I usually think landscape or architecture. Um, maybe architecture isn't quite the right word. How do you describe the work that you do? Well, um, I, I think photography tell the story, I, I will fail to put in the words. <laughs> I think uh, photograph is about the seeing and, uh, and even more seeing in real life. Like we see too much on computer now, you know. I love to go to gallery and see real print on the wall. Now is of course different time, but sure. I always, the biggest joy is see real print. Um, um, what I am after in my photography is capture the beauty. I always thinking about Thomas Aquinas, he definition of beautiful is a light of overwhelming intensity. 
And I think so, I always follow that in my photography, the lighting, the, the love for the, the beauty. That's what I'm after all my life. So do you know what your finished image is gonna look like before you make the photograph? No, I, 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 I'm I not like Ansel Adams. <laughs> <laughs> he can pre-visualize the image. Um, I'm usually very surprised. Uh, <laughs> because I shoot very low light condition, uh, extreme lighting, and uh, my exposure sometimes from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Uh, so something happening magical without me knowing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, especially like um, the image absolution you have it. Uh, I was in a church uh, in Lithuania. I spending about six months uh, living in Lithuania. I always realized to make the photograph, you have to know the place or the country. Here, let I me put that image up on the screen. Okay. Uh, let's see. Roman, where were you living now? I'm living in the little Shasta Valley, somewhere near uh, Weed. California, about 14 oh. miles from Wheat, California, about about 20 miles from Mount Shasta. Did I get the right image? Yes, yes. Um, so I, I, I have a, I always photograph places also to uh, not very well known. I don't like to go to places where everybody goes. Um, also, places I know or I have some connection. Uh, my grandfather was used to living in the Vilnius uh, in Lithuania. And um, uh, so I was always try visit the country or the city, but there was most of the time under Russian occupation, only about 14, 15 years is free used to be called um, capital of uh, Jerusalem. Uh, it was uh, almost 75% uh, Jewish people living there now, almost none. Um, so I, I was always one to go there. And um, so I decided to spend like six months down there. And then it's so interesting on the square mile, it's probably 47 churches. <laughs> uh, Used to be 85 synagogue, but nothing left, only wow. one survived. So I decided to photograph these churches and um, I was often coming to the church and finally a Polish priest say, well, why is so interesting? I say, well, I'm interested in the architecture, this Franciscan church. And he said, wow, that's amazing. And he gave me a key to the church. <laughs> so <laughs> I was, able to come in any time I wanted. Uh, but the, uh, so I was during the mass one time accidentally, I uh, Stepan and the priest was in confession. <coughs> and the mass was coming on, so I wasn't feel comfortable to photograph. So I just set the camera, opened the shutter speed and left for 20 minutes. And when I, so I didn't know what was happening. I saw the light, but mm -hmm. I didn't see the 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 breath uh, because if even there was summer inside the church was close to zero degree, mm -hmm. so this is a breath coming from church speaking, and the person who is in confession is invisible. Uh, there is a little shadow in the photograph. He yes, I see left. that. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, yeah, it probably left, but. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes, so, right that, in this area, exposure you you can predict it and uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and create it such a magical image. Uh, and you use Trix for all your images now? Yeah, I, I use Trix thanks to Kodak. I used to get them for free, so <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> and then you tone the images. Yes, um, sometimes for the old images. Uh, I always, as a young boy, was exposed to sepia uh, photograph. You know, there was a, such a strong tradition in you know, Europe that most photograph was tone. Uh, so you get this, and I think so they create some more three-dimensional quality. 
when you tone the print. I don't tone every print. I give always option, but sometimes um, it's strong. It stay a lot stronger. Yeah, Melissa is entering the room. Let me let her in. And, uh, so let's let's pick another photo here. I've got another church photo. So let me bring that one up here. Is that sharing? Yes. Uh, so this is the same uh, the same church. Um, and um, there was not mess that time, and but there was a restoration going on. So uh, they leave a lot of dust, and dust <laughs> create this incredible uh, stream of light, which uh, I capture um, doing that. And then um, I thought the architecture of this church is so beautiful in the, the raw quality. Uh, I, I don't like when it's all gold and painted. So mm -hmm. uh, the, the priest always say, oh my God, you know, this is not finished yet. Could you come back when we all repaint it? <laughs> I said, this is the, the best quality for me. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm always looking for that. And also kind of open the, the, the visual aspect of the architecture yeah. with all the clutter, so simplicity. I'm always uh, make it as simple as possible. Uh, so Steve is asking in the chat, says it's magnificent image. Is there a particular compression development that you prefer? Yeah, well, the, uh, extremely difficult. Uh, I wasn't thinking that I can capture that because between the lights, light area and shadow is almost 20 stops, <laughs> which film is incapable to do that. So I extremely overexpose and do like minus three development um, and diluted also developer PMK to, to the maximum and extremely slow development to allow. And also that's why I use Trix, old Trix, the new one is not as good. Uh, <laughs> it has an incredible ability handle highlights, uh, which other film cannot. Uh, so it allowed me to capture all the lights and the shadow. It is extremely difficult print. Mm -hmm. uh, the burning lights it come to close to maybe five minutes on in larger. So wow. <laughs> and the slow mistake, you will see it. Uh, uh, so it, extremely difficult print, but also extremely was popular. I, I sold over 250 images of this uh, print. So David's <laughs> asking how long the exposures were. I think you said the first one was 20 minutes. See, when I, when I find a situation, I, I just lose completely control. I don't <laughs> know what I'm doing. I, I don't measure lighting. I, I, I never check how long. I assume it was close to five to 10 minutes. Okay. And Jerry's asking, is it the pyro that gives the beautiful tones to the images? Yeah, I, I think so. The pyro has some magic um, to it. Um, and um, could, allows, you, could you explain allows, what you mean by pyro to people who aren't familiar with well, it? Well, uh, what, what the pyro is is that nothing but stain uh, create a layer of stain on the negative. So negatives when you look at the on the pyro negatives it has like uh, almost the color quality of negative you know like yellow brown all different stain mm -hmm. quality of layer of it and then uh, uh, and they give it this uh, the stain give it this quality that if you can expose for longer time it will allow the lights go through even to area who is extremely overdeveloped so the PMK also help with that um, extreme condition of lighting, which I like to do. So Roman, how much of that do you think uh, is created in the dark room rather than on the negative? Um, in, in some, like this print, 
it would be say more is in dark room than in real life. Uh, on some images, it's uh, PMK is so wonderful that if you have like an ideal five, six stops of zone system, then negative is perfect. Uh, there's mm -hmm. some negative, I just do straight print. Uh, nothing. Okay. Uh, yeah, but when there's a extreme lighting, it's it's a dark room work. So knowing material skills, you know, in the, in the process, it's very important to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guy Washburn is asking about the images of the trees and flooding rivers. Can you talk about them? I don't know if we have one of those here. Uh, let me pull up an image though and see if this is sort of along the lines of what Guy's asking about. Oh, that's one of my favorite image. Yeah, I, I used to I used to work with uh, Fishing Wildlife and Nature Conservancy, and uh, I was volunteer literally planting tree and doing work. But when they realized I'm photographer, they allowed me to um, enter national wild refuges or close area. Um, uh, Nature Conservancy even pay for my first book, uh, To Hearted Oak. Uh, this image, it was in San Luis National Refuge. It's, um, my tradition was uh, when I lived in Modesto in Central Valley uh, to go um, to refuge, get the bottle of wine, sit in a little uh, viewing area and looking the crane um, landing and coming uh, to, to refuge uh, and sometimes photograph. <coughs> And then when I was driving back home, I saw this image. It was start getting foggy, and uh, but uh, I didn't have a proper lens to do that. Uh, two ten was too far, so I went walk in the mud <laughs> to my almost chest. <laughs> the water is it is disgusting, you know, the muddy <laughs> with all the debris, um, and said say. Uh, have water is like a run up from the farm and mix with fresh water. So it's not very good for you. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So I, it's, it's also cold. Um, so I'm walk to that, uh, be closer to phrase that image. So I standing in this water and waiting when the, uh, all the movement on the water come down and took the photograph. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I was planning stuff for um, evening uh, dinner with friends, but I could not because I was all covered with mud and <laughs> wet and cold. <laughs> Actually, I was uh, took all my clothes and driving in my underwear in winter. Mm -hmm. I was thinking if a police pulled me over, that would be <laughs> hard to explain, explain what this I'm doing. <laughs> but, but this image also, um, it is uh, some magic to it. Um, and uh, it, it was also, uh, I, I never released for a long time. Uh, most of the uh, truly images I was kept for myself. But then one time uh, I released and uh, it, it just people respond so incredible. I, I don't know how many copy I sold of this mm -hmm. image. And then also after so many 20 years of photographing truly, um, director of Eastman Kodak say, hey, let's go do book just on the images of Thule. So the traces is all about the Thule and this kind of images, uh, simple, very graphic. Uh, um, and uh, and um, also for me, wetland is 95% um, 90 of wetland in California is destroyed. I mean, mm -hmm. We, we are in crisis and uh, that's the part where the migratory birds coming. And also this is where we used to filter the water uh, in Central Valley. Uh, so so the, the very important part of the ecosystem of California. Okay, well, let's see, I'm gonna bring up another image here for you. Uh, let me get the share going. John, while you do that, uh, yeah. I, can, I can comment on the wetlands and stuff as I'm right outside a national refuge. And so Roman, I, I can relate and appreciate 
the steps that you took to capture that image because uh, a lot of times it's working with what you have but the sacrifices you have to take to capture that image and so it uh, i appreciate the inspiration there's there's a lot for me to work with down here too i'm in far south texas uh, and uh, uh in a large bird uh birding uh estuary but go ahead john i'm sorry you sure know, yeah, it's, it's okay people to talk. Uh, i don't want to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> So Roman, is the 210 your standard go-to lens? Yes, um, it, it, especially I have uh, I have uh, 500, 360, and uh, mm -hmm. another, but they heavy, you know. So uh, <laughs> sometimes I limit it uh, to two lenses, 210 and uh, 110, wide angle, and uh, and a little bit telescopic lens. Uh, so yeah, this is 210, but it was not enough. So I'm driving uh, from Bay Area to uh, home and I'm near Reading area and I see rain and this org, I'm on the freeway. I pull over <laughs> from the freeway, jump the fence. <laughs> so I'm trespassing <laughs> and uh, so get closer to that org. <laughs> and of course I have a, my German shepherd with me <laughs> to protect me. <laughs> I know I shouldn't do that, but it was so overwhelming that uh, I have to get this image. So we trespassing, going, taking photograph. And just when I retrieve like two, two redneck pool with pickup <laughs> with two hunting dogs um, <laughs> that's asking me what I'm doing here. <laughs> so I say, I, I apologize. I say, you know, I know I'm trespassing, but uh, I have to take the photograph. He said, well, could you come and ask for permission? And of course the dog are like uh, very nervous because my German shepherd let them know that the paper don't come out from the pickup. You know? <laughs> so we kind of strange situation and, and, um, and he said, well, you should ask me for permission. And I said, well, how I know that you own that land, you know? Uh, and then this situation, so I apologize and they let me go. I went to my car, took a book and give it to him. And then he <laughs> became a fan. <laughs> nice. So, so it turned out to good. But sometimes, you know, you have to risk to take the good photograph. <laughs> yeah. So how many holders do you usually take out with you in the field? Um, I usually have quite a bit, maybe 25 to 40 holders. <laughs> <laughs> so how much weight are you carrying out there? It's ex extreme, but sometimes I have assistant of my oh, wife okay. helped me carry me. My <laughs> your, your wife? Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh that doesn't call for a wife that calls for native porters. <laughs> and my <laughs> assistant, Maya. <laughs> Where's the Maya? Maya, come here. <laughs> Maya. There's coming my assistant who carry holders. <laughs> so while we were showing one of the other images, Robert was holding up. Uh, one of the tree images, but I don't know if people got to see that because the screen share was on. Mm -hmm. Robert, do you want to pick that up again? Sure. Uh, it's called Bear Trees by the Rivers, the title. Come on, Maya. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Here's my assistant. Beautiful shepherd. How old? <laughs> She's three years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, let's go back. Yes, uh, Robert's going to pick up a, a print there. I, I just need to email someone here. Um, Who are you, Robert? <laughs> well, I'm ready to go. Let me Thank understand something. The, let me understand Blair. something. So Roman, you're you're schlepping out there a four by five camera, a lens, a tripod, twenty five holders. What else? Uh, tripod. You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And, Some and, umbrella because I like to shoot in the rain. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. But what are you actually carrying? 
garnished. Nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's Rob, Robert's holding up the, the photo there for people to see. Oh, my God. That's a beautiful image. Where did you get that? <laughs> you know where I got it. John <laughs> Anderson. Uh, oh, there you did. <laughs> Uh, well, that, that's a very beautiful image. Yeah, yeah this is an, on Nature Conservancy. That's another uh, uh, long story, but make it short. Uh, this property was owned by some um, gentleman, um, which I decided not to trust this because he was shooting gun all the time <laughs> on her property using that like, old kind of fashion rifle you know, where they used to use the civil war. <laughs> <laughs> I drove to his property and there was like million sign. You'd be shot on trespassing or something like that. <laughs> it was like a very intimidating drive to his property. <laughs> I come out from the car, he's looking at me like, <laughs> I used to have a lot long hair, beard, I was like hippie. <laughs> and I said, could I get the permission from you to, you? go to your property and photograph and he looked at me like that sure but you know so what do you want to photograph i said i want to photograph this uh, ox and um, and uh, the bird tree which is uh, i forgot the name of the tree now um and he said but you need canoe so you say here is my canoe you can use my canoe <laughs> i said the problem is i have to come like four o'clock in the morning it is okay and he said, okay, so I went a couple times down there, um, and I have to, again, walk. I, this time I wearing wa fishing waders. Uh, I walk to water because I need to get the reflection of the tree. Actually, I went maybe 25 times and never uh, right lighting condition. This time was perfect. I want to get the perfect reflection so I'm standing in the water with my camera, camera almost barely touching the water. And uh, I'm waiting for sun to come out. I need a little bit more lighting. Sun come out, this perfect steel reflection. And then when sun come in Central Valley, create a little bit warm air. So the reflection start disappearing but i clicked the shutter speed i was a little bit disappointed but then when i develop it create this magical reflection so sometimes you know it, it, god helps you <laughs> creation so you said your standard film is trix do you have a standard printing paper um yeah i used to use oriental and i love that uh, paper you know it's such an incredible quality graded paper actually i use uh then i switched to effort multigrade it's not the greatest paper but it's it's solid paper and holds very well for toning so now i try to keep it simple uh mm -hmm. one paper one film uh that way you know what you're doing uh, what kind of toning, temp toning are you doing? SP220 uh, photo speed, uh, that's an English uh, toner. And I also mix my own toner, but it is so complicated and so many difficult chemicals. And most of this chemical cannot be shipped now in a crazy California yeah. or regulation. So I, I'm buying the mm, SP2, SP st20 photo speed toner from england do you do any alternative process like platinum palladium or anything like that or you're all just silver yeah i i, I do one thing only i yeah I just concentrate no that's great <laughs> no, I, no time for any alternative work <laughs> do you ever do portraits uh, yeah, I do, but I'm not very good with people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the total opposite. I love working with people. I mean, you put me out on the landscape and I have no idea what to do. I just freeze up and, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm glad we're opposite. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ro Roman, have you ever tried digital? 
Uh, if, uh, if the iPhone consider it digital, yes. <laughs> uh, I have nothing against digital um, photography. And uh, I, my friend Max from Ashland is like one of the best print, digital printer. Actually, he will be on your program or he was already. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mac Colbert. Yeah. Yeah. Colbert, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he always, uh, we all, I sometimes go to him and we print some of my image. I'm saying, you're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's getting very close, you know, achieve incredible quality. Yeah, digital photography, I, I don't know, don't appeal to me, um, but, you know, I see some images and they're great. But what they bother me with digital photography, that the guys always claim that's photograph. <laughs> You know, like uh, they steal clouds from other image. They put uh, something else. They remove something. They should. It shouldn't call photograph. They should call <laughs> some computer created image. It requires skill, vision. You know, if mm -hmm. it looks good, it's good. But why not admit it? Is it not really photograph? Yeah. So, That's what artist influenced you? And that could be artists, uh, as in painters or photographers. Exactly. Who were, so who were your influences growing up? Oh, when I when I grew up, um, you know, I uh, now I love, you know, when I came to United States when I was a young man, uh, I was right away influenced by, you know, Edward and West and uh, all other people. But in my country uh, was uh, Buhak. Um, it's a photographer. We use large view camera. Most of it architecture did you know, like Ansel, incredible quality of work. Roman Vishniak, uh, who photographed most of it people. Mm. So that was my influence from photography, but most of it, we spend a lot of time in museum. So like uh, painters, most of it, Polish painter, uh, very dramatic landscape, uh, you know, Holland. Uh, and um, even Leonardo da Vinci, we have one one image in, in the museum in Krakow. So yeah, so most of it was a painting, um, not photography from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Do you Roman. know Richard Horowitz? Yes, I do. Roman, may I ask? Um, gee, I can well imagine that your um, your works are so much better in print than viewing them online. Um, do you find it somewhat disappointing that uh, people not as people are not seeing your works in galleries as much and seeing them online? And do you are your sales primarily traditional galleries, or do you uh, have uh, substantial sales online? Yeah, you know, I used to have so many galleries. I mean, like it was a time I had like twenty-five galleries or something like that. It was so much work, you know, and so much disappointed, you know. Uh, some gallery are wonderful, you know, some gallery are horrible. <laughs> uh, deal with them. Um, uh, I love, uh, from beginning, Ansel Adams Photography West uh, did incredible job in sales. Yeah, I've now, seen your uh, work in phot Photography West in Carmel. Yes. Um, and some other gallery were great too, uh, like uh, in Texas or, you know, Jackson Hall, but they're all close um, for all different reasons. And, um, and I actually put such a strain on me that for many years, I just do nothing but print. It was almost like hard labor, <laughs> spending uh, 13, 14 hours in dark room to making prints. Not to complain, you make money, but uh, it just took me away from my work. Uh, and especially when you have to do everything by yourself, uh, it is exhausting. Uh, um, so, you know, I sell Lara to the gallery, then um, a lot of them close. A lot of them I don't want to deal with. And now I just do little private sales and a little bit through the gallery. Uh, uh, just enough to pay my bills. Uh, so I have free time to do work, which I really enjoy it. Roman, would you ever consider uh, selling the, your images 
yourself? I, I do. I do now because, you know, the situation is like if somebody comes directly to me, before I didn't, now I do, you know, and, uh, um, and a lot of people, because they can't see, they, they uh, just recently a couple of people fly uh, to to local airport and bought a lot of images from me. Uh, so yeah, I, I opened my studio to, to people so they can come and see it. Uh, I have so many images that majority of the gallery unable to carry them. Wait a minute, what, what, why do they have to come to your gallery to see it? A lot of people want to see the real print, you know, some, oh, some, okay. some people like, you know, from, you know, Texas or Wyoming, there's no gallery day. So uh, they, they heard about me or the, my work, but they want to see the real print, you know. Mm -hmm. Would you would you would you would you ever think about marketing your images online? Uh, you know, I, really, I have to admit that I don't have to. Uh, I have enough sale to 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 do fine. You know, I'm not I'm not crazy about be too busy. You know. Mm -hmm. I sell a oh, okay. Images, uh, <laughs> right. so, mind with me. <laughs> do you do limited editions or do you do open editions or? Yeah, I, I used to do 200, some 200, 250 uh, images and some of them sold out. It's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I cut to 50, then I cut to 40. And now they are 40 images. Yeah. And do you do different sizes or you still have a standard print yeah, size? Yeah, I used to, uh, when I did 250, I did 50 of 8 by 10, 50 of 11 by 14, 20 by 24. Um, now I do something 30 by 40, 40 by 60. This is behind me is uh, 30 by 40 uh, image. Uh, and I make them only five edition of five. Um, then the 40 now it's all images. It don't matter what, what size. So mm -hmm. just, just. And four. David here mentioned in the comments that he's running a gallery in Germany. Is that, and you have Roman's work there, David. If you want to tell us about that. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, I'm, I'm glad to be here and and glad to see you all. Um, I opened a gallery at probably the, in retrospect, the worst possible time. Um, but I planned this just over a year ago before we all knew, before we could all spell Corona. And uh, six months ago, I opened this gallery um, and be, th through some coincidences, some years ago, I actually acquired one of Roman's prints. So I, I, I got in touch with him and said, hey, I'm opening a gallery, let's talk if you want. So we ended up talking and I now have some of his prints and there will be some more sometime soon. And um, there is some interest, um, particularly in, in, in Spain and Portugal, and I think in Italy. Um, we're going to, when we're allowed to reopen, because all stores are in Germany are closed at the moment, but when we're allowed to open, um, we will be having an exhibition um, of Roman's work. Um, and so if anyone is going to be anywhere near Frankfurt, um, do please let me know or get in touch with, go to the website, which I put in the chat uh, and send me an email. Great. Well, but I'm really here. looking forward to this. It will be completely different from anything else we've shown so far. Your accent doesn't sound German. And it'll be followed by. <laughs> no, I'm English. I'm an I'm an English exile. I lived I've lived I've lived in Germany for thirty years, yeah. um, <laughs> and it'll be followed sometime later this year um, by Birgit's pictures. So, cool. David, David, so you, all of your shops are closed. All your galleries are closed. And are you selling anything online in Germany? Everything is closed except for food shops or pharmacies, everything. And um, so I have only recently started a gallery 
-hmm. and um, I have had I have had some success in sales. Um, for the moment, as as Roman has has already said, the, the amazing thing is seeing prints physically in front of you. So I'm sure longer term online will not be a problem, but I need to have the people come into the gallery first to appreciate how wonderful pictures are before they can trust me and spend oh, okay. that kind of money yep. on something on the internet. It'll happen, but it, yep. it takes time. No, I agree with you on that. Yep. Because all the major uh, auction houses are have switched over to online, but they already have a following and they have uh, 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 trust. It comes down to that they're trusting uh, the, the auction houses. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so exactly. Jim Brach I wish you luck. I do. <laughs> yes. Jim Brachier has mentioned some work that he hasn't seen your work before and he loves the light. He's looking at four flower pots and I'm going to bring that up on the screen here. Uh, I know it's a little smaller than the others, but you can still get an idea of it. This is from Roman's website. And there's a link to this in the chat. So you want to tell us a little bit about, about the Lithuania series here, Roman? Yeah, this is... Uh... You know, it's a very interesting, um, there's a, a Kretinga a monastery, probably a thousand years old monastery. Uh, I was amazing, they led me inside. <laughs> Such a, you know, not perfect Catholic word. <laughs> uh, but the, I gained kind of trust with few, um, Franciscan monk, um, one of them it, it was such a wonderful gentleman, very young. He was sent uh, to Russian army. He was sent to Russian army and uh, went sent to rescue people in Chernobyl. After that experience, uh, he could not function in society. You know what he saw, um, and he decided became monk. Um, but he was interesting a little bit in photography and he said, hey, you have to come to Kretinga. This is like incredible monastery. And um, they allowed me go inside and I did some photograph down there. I also photographed them. Uh, and I was, you know, I was taught, you know, how Spartan life they had. And then they invite me, uh, oh, they are standing right there, actually, the one of the tall gentlemen was, uh, uh, that um, they have a wonderful courtyard with always new art uh, exhibition, which I thought was wonderful. And the uh, little of middle of the yard was a mirror uh, kind of uh, cord, which they go and meditate, which I thought was very fascinating. Um, and then also I was like, uh, mm, and they finally invited me one day inside and I walk inside, there was some uh, soccer game. I walked to like the most beautiful uh, exercise room I ever see. <laughs> we full of a beautiful wood floor, uh, huge TV, <laughs> wonderful sofa and full boxes of beer. <laughs> I thought, well, I may join this mark. <laughs> Could be not that bad living. <laughs> so there was, a, they also have some fun. So, um, okay. but the, the building um, and the church um, was incredible. Um, of course, all in the process of restoration because the damn Russian destroyed most of the churches uh, in Lithuania. So do you maintain the four by five aspect ratio through all your prints or do you sometimes crop? Um, I used to try, um, like, you know, from beginning, you, you, you try print everything with the detail, the same print and, and follow this crazy rules, don't cropping. <laughs> and now I do everything, you know, so I crop images. I, I, um, because sometimes, uh, 
you have to have so many lenses to capture what you you intend um, and they create quite a bit of difficulty in a closed space in you know, architectural you have to have so many lenses so sometimes mm -hmm. i'm cropping now but 90 percent of my images are are full straight uh, straight four by five negative yeah. so jeff's asking in the chat where do you find classic tri-x and what do you consider retired negatives so what are that you mean by that uh, so, you know, uh, retired negatives are most of it, you know, I sold 250 editions uh, and so I don't print them anymore uh, or some of them 40 edition. Uh, they're only available like an artist group when I do show for museum or some major gallery want to buy it and I don't have it. Um, then I do an artist group, but most of it I don't print them anymore for the public. Mm -hmm. And where do you get the Tri-X? Uh, Tri-X, I, I have still um, probably maybe 100 boxes <laughs> frozen. <laughs> um, was, they were so, so grateful to me. Uh, the Kodak, they sent me so many boxes before they went out of business. But now somebody making the Tri-X, but it's a horrible quality. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. There is something uh, like dust in the, in the image or like uneven emulsion. Oh. I bought it a couple of them, hundred something, $60, and they horrible quality. Yeah. Mm. So we so might- are you gonna go to? Oh, I'm sorry, John. No, go ahead, Jerry. Well, so when you run out of your Tri-X, Roman, what what film are you considering going to, or are you? Have you well, checked I, it out? I'm actually plan, planning retiring in a couple of years, maybe. Yeah, so oh. I'm not worried. I still have enough. Oh. I'm gonna go may, to Panatomic may, X. <laughs> yeah. May I ask one other question, John? Of course. And you froze uh, up again. Roman, earlier in the comments. Hang on, Jerry, you're freezing up. I didn't get the question. I'll put it in the chat. Oh, now you're clear. Oh, <laughs> earlier, did I hear you say you don't measure the light before you- Yeah, yeah. Man. To, to figure yeah. your exposure? Yeah, from beginning, I used to measure the light, um, uh, but when I should, I see lighting and it will not last for long. So I almost don't have a, so when I said I, I, or I do a exposure and exposure usually with the lighting I do, it usually required more than two, three, four seconds. So the measurement lights um, is not as crucial. Uh, and from my experience after shooting so many years, I, I know what the, what the lighting is. Um, so, so most of it, um, I, if I'm familiar with the lighting, if I go to other country, uh, I, I measure uh, the lighting. Um, but, you know, like local, I know right away, you know, uh, which mm -hmm. exposure. Yeah, John Wallace was asking about recreating some of your old negatives digitally and printing from those so you do the dodge and burning on the computer. But I think you sort of touched on that when you said you got together with um, Mac Holbert and you said the prints weren't quite yeah, up to. Yeah, I, I wish I met Max early. I used to have this, such a beautiful negative and there was slightly damaged or with some problem and I throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> and now I, I regret because I was thinking maybe restore them, but uh, I don't do that. Uh, I, I, and I don't think so, I will. <laughs> I mean, I like when the print is unperfect, it has little problem, you know. The perfect print, what's a problem, you know? <laughs> perfect it's print doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where you buy silver gelatin print. They have to have little imperfection. Yeah. Roman, let me, let me come back to something. So you were born in Poland. Yes. And then you went to Lithuania. No, no, I defected to to Austria um, during how the did you get, how did you how did you get to Lithuania? 
and why? Uh, oh, well, I already became citizen of the United States and I went back to Lithuania. During the communists, there was no Lithuania. Um, right. And there was the Polish people wasn't allowed to go to to Vilnius. Uh, it was a very Polish city and the Jewish city. So the Russian don't allow you even travel there. Um, um, because you know all this nationality and problem, they didn't want to, you know, uh, and the claim of Polish people to look to Vilnius because it used to be Polish city. Um, it's very complicated <laughs> historically. You know? Did you uh, did you happen to uh, photograph? There's a there's the oldest synagogue in Lithuania. It's the largest and oldest synagogue in Western Europe. And they, they recently uh, discovered it a couple of years ago and, and unearthed it. No, uh, I only photographed one um, synagogue who was restored, was partially damaged, uh, is in the middle of the Vilnius. And I went inside and photographed um, that. It's a very difficult photograph um, synagogue because they have very little lighting inside, natural lighting. Uh, right. So it's very difficult, but the, the only one I didn't know about the other one uh, on the uncover. Uh, recently, I, I, it was recently uncovered, yeah. maybe like three years ago. Yeah, it was, no. It was the largest one. No, I, 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 since that I didn't go to Lithuania. I didn't been in Europe for a couple of years. Um, okay. So going back to the dark room, David Palermo is asking, "What is your main developer?" Uh, for for film or paper? Well, probably both. Let's talk. Start film. Um, the film is the PMK, the Hutchinson formula, and uh, a PMK I used to mix by myself, which is like a. Um, Edward Weston uh, formula. Um, so I mix by myself, but the, the kind of, when you mix, they create the poison gas. Uh, so I have to mix outside, which is kind of painful. So now I'm I just use PMK Hutchinson liquid formula. Buying from uh, photography formula from Montana. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the film, um, I use I used to use all different developing. Uh, I mix my own, and um, I uh, use uh, uh, what's it called? I forgot. And I'm, I'm just now buying liquid one. Uh, mm -hmm from uh, freestyle uh, from my, uh, uh, oh, let me go check what this is the name of. <laughs> Miller, Miller, gonna, just found that synagogue online. Yep. Largest one in, in Western Europe. He's probably gonna come back with a can of Accufine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like P20 plus. Uh, It's uh, from LA. It's it's pretty good in this liquid, and uh, I'm a little bit lazy to <laughs> to make them from scratch. I wanted to ask a, a question, Roman. Hi. Hi. Um, how are you? <laughs> uh, it's about your beautiful skies that you have in your pictures. Uh, do you, do you do some kind of preparation before the shooting? How do you choose the the, the places and how do you look for the weather? I usually day before pray to God and try to communicate with him if he can send some clouds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I usually, um, you see, this is like um, Brett say, you cannot be Sunday photographer, you know, weekend photographer, okay? Uh, so yeah, I, ch I check uh, when is the most possibility for different weather quality uh, in other country or mine. So I'm very careful choosing where I go photograph. So 
I usually try get good research on the weather predictability and I go the time um, photograph. Uh, but you know, sometimes um, I make some photograph without the clouds and um, without you know special weather, and they come out very successful. So so you never know. Uh, I like clouds because uh, uh, they they create the diffusion light. So you have this uh, and the closing the zone scale. You know, allowed you um, to to stay in the zone, so so you don't have to burn and dodge photographs. So um, cloudy condition allowed you um, get more detail and it highlights more detail in in, in the shadow. Are you are you using filters at all, Roman? Uh, orange, red? I I use a lot of filters. Yeah, I use yellow, green, uh, red, uh, light red, dark, uh, very dark. Yeah, f filter. Um, it's it's very essential for black and white photography. Yes. Good. So we've got another image here that you sent me. So let's bring this up. Oh, let me see how to do that. So, want to tell us a little bit about this image? Yes, um, I was driving on, uh, to Yosemite, uh, and um, I have to sometimes stop and uh, play with my dog. Um, so we pull over and uh, did a little uh, hike, and there was incredible heavy fog, uh, which don't happen very often in, in, in the area. And um, so I quickly went run back and get the camera, and uh, just during the time, a little bit sun opening and give it this lighting on this already, you know, there was beginning of winter, uh, some leaves, dry leaves on the oaks. And uh, it kind of remind me of uh, Ansel Adams photograph, you know, which he did with um, in the summer. Um, and uh, I, I just, uh, I just very short, sure, I measured the lighting, everything was close to one second exposure. Um, and I don't know, it's a kind of very moody, very, very peaceful, meditative image. Um, this is one of the I done recently. Very nice. It's straight print, no dodging, no burning. Tri-X film, magic. Any more questions? Yeah, people in the audience, feel free to, to way, open up your mics and ask some I'm questions. Other way, going to the dark room. <laughs> uh, what kind of light do you like the most? I see uh, for studying your your pictures that you you love backlighting, right? And side lighting maybe, but backlighting the the most. Uh, when you coming visit me again? Uh, as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking when I go to Germany, I may I may drive to Portugal and Spain again. Um, I uh, love the, I love the food in Portugal. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, most of it, uh, most of it, Gonzalez. I um, I I like shoot towards the light. Uh, to the towards sun, <laughs> towards to the light. I don't know why, but uh, I, it's more challenging. But I love that um, that quality um, sure. shooting towards yeah, the light, which is always like in a in a book telling you, "Don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, for for years now, I also shoot uh, very very much for towards the light. I don't know why, but I don't know. The, yeah, I, the, I, I don't know. I like this. It, it probably creates the kind of like magical quality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, I like shooting 90 degrees. So when sun is 90 degrees to my subject, uh, 
I think so you get the like the yeah I'm sure you can figure out this mathematically mm -hmm. the sharpest image if you want to create probably when the sun hitting 90 degree angle to your subject uh, then you get incredible uh, sharpness and definition uh, of the image um, I also yeah. like uh, shooting when the sun go behind the clouds mm -hmm. I create um, yeah, it, the, the very specific kind of lighting. Um, yeah, we have to look more for the shapes and how the relationship of of, of the forms. And yeah, I, for, I first looking for lighting for me that is essential lighting, and then I try find to phrase something in it, uh, which is the most difficult part. You know, I see so many time incredible lighting, but. Um, nothing to to compose with that lighting, and that's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, but David's inviting everyone to join him in the gallery once it reopens and everyone gets to visit Europe again. So um, Jeff is asking if you can talk a bit about the pricing level. levels you, you have on your website. For me? Yes, Roman, how do you do your pricing there? Of pricing, the more sold, the higher the price. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It was a it was a, a time where I had to produce like 30, 40 prints of the uh, you know orders, and so my print from beginning was like two, three hundred dollars. Um, then it was like around thousand dollar, and uh, I could not fulfill the water. So I have to raise the prices. Um, and some of them, even people pay 40,000 today, which, which is unusual because probably very few photographer, you know, during his own life get so much money for the photograph. So I, I'm very happy and lucky that people appreciate that. Yeah. that. Jeff, you know, did you have more specific questions about it? Well, I'm I'm reading his explanation, and what I can't figure out is how something moves from level one to level two to level three to level four. Is there a numerical yeah, yeah. cutoff so for each when one? I, when I sell ten photograph, I move them to the next level. Okay, and then on the website itself, if you were looking at a particular image, is there any way of knowing what level it's currently at? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Now it is. Um, I removed the pricing, but I put the bag because I have so many email. You know, what is the pricing on the images? So yeah. So you get level one, level two, level three, level four, and there is a pricing now on the website. I mean, suggestion pricing. You know, um, it's 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 more flexible now uh, than before. Um, so yeah, you, you can uh, whatever images one category. There's a pricing for first level. Um, I, I don't. There's I don't. No way of telling what image is at level one, two, or three, or four. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, and you can blame them. It's not very clear to bring it. <laughs> I think. I think if you go up to the menu where it says pricing and you click on one of the levels, it will list the images under that level. Is that right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I see That's it now. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and also uh, the best way is probably just text it or message because it just, uh, I, I just don't keep it. I used to, it's a very difficult when you have so many images, you know, uh, to, to keep it this, uh, you know, moving from level to level. And if it's whatever level it is, I am flexible. I'll give it the same price, whatever, whatever it is, uh, you find it or, you know. I am easy to going. So you do an addition of, uh, I guess it says 40? Yeah, 40 now, yes. All but at once, yes. and then you but store the prints still, and sell them? No, the still old images are still with uh, 200 or 250, yeah. Okay. But, but do, you, do you print them all at, the, at one time and store them, or are they printed on demand? I almost always on demand. I never manage to keep an extra print. Mm -hmm. um, when I print, I, 
if I make 10 prints, maybe two are good. The rest of it I destroy. Uh, my wife always stealing them from me and hiding. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm very peculiar what I release and I am extremely slow in a dark room. So I don't produce a lot of prints. Um, I barely have an inventory, which I regret because when I print them on old paper, they will a lot more beautiful. So the older images are, I, I can, with the quality paper today, I cannot match the quality of my old images. Yeah. Wow. So you keep mentioning Birgit in here and she's in the room here too. She, she does your website and she's doing some books for some photographers. Yeah, um, she's very talented, yes. <laughs> In order to put the images in the right level, I have to have the master tell me with what he sold and he really doesn't. So <laughs> I, I put the blame back to him. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us here, Brigitte. Thank you. I must ask, is there a, a, a size of your prints that is most popular? Usually when somebody approach me, um, yeah, there's always image who is best for the size, you know. Uh, I, like the oak we saw it, uh, I only eight by ten, you know. I can print bigger, but it don't hold the oak in the rain. Some images has to be large, you know, um, twenty by twenty four or even thirty by forty to to get that um, the feeling of the uh, the my ex experience. I have it. So yeah, every image I think has a own size, um, but you know, depends on, on people preference if they want to choose, you know, a size they like it. I do it, but I recommend it to not do it um, if if they um, if they wanted that uh, information. Yes. So Jerry, you said text or email to reach him. I'm not sure what you meant by that. Oh, sorry. Um, and now you're frozen again. How about now? Better. Still? Okay. Good. I, I thought he had mentioned texting to him and because he gets so many emails and I didn't know if... Uh, there was a number on his website to text to? Or? No, 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 you can email me. No. Email. Yeah, okay. I can. Okay, thank you. Okay. So anyone else have some questions for Roman? Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I Martin. just thought I'd let him know that I went ahead and bought his book, Traces, but just the book, I didn't buy the print as well. We'll see, <laughs> but I like the book. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Martin, you have uh, a question? Yeah, just um, I've met Roman a couple of times down at Wildcat and uh, you mentioned the Westerns and the influence. So I was just wondering, how, how did you actually meet Kim? Oh, let's see how this happened. It was so long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you're involved with the Western scholarships, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was helping, um, I mean, actually, uh, I think so. We met one time on some party, and uh, Kim invited me to to his uh, home, which I was like uh, like going to Mecca <laughs> photography. It was it was I you know I love Edward Weston because I love his simplicity of the work. You know his dark room is like a sink and you know a bowl of lights covered with toilet paper. Uh, and produce these incredible images. You know, I mean, you know, you don't need much to to create. Is that a Western Nautilus behind you? <laughs> yes, it is. One I have a lot of Western um, photograph. Lucky me. Um, yes. Yes. And um, so, yeah, and, and then uh, we became friend, and also I know Kim father before that. Um, and I love bread work. Mm -hmm. 
And so, and also Kim start, uh, you know, supporting the dark room, uh, uh, you know, idea for students in the in, in high school and kids and start this, uh, uh, um, start this program for uh, scholarship. So I, I decided to give her one of my print and we sold almost like 40, 40 prints for the scholarships and we make nice. quite a bit of money. Then we start making dinners. Uh, I was cooking, Kim was cooking and people pay for that. And <laughs> we do every year kind of dinner in uh, Kim house. And yeah, Kim did a birthday cake for me this year. I happened to be there on my birthday. <laughs> he's a great, he's a great cook. So yeah. we, we invite like 20 people, people pay and then get the dinner tour of the Edward Weston home and mine or Kim print, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah. It's cheaper than buying. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry's asking if you know John Sexton and Jeff Shewey's asking about Huntington Witherall. Yeah, I, I know both John. I actually took one time even workshop. I, I always want to see, uh, you know, anything just uh, try to get inside the John Sexton home. <laughs> so I took <laughs> Yeah, I invited John on here over the summer, but he was too busy. I invited Hunter, but he said he doesn't doesn't want to deal with computers. <laughs> well, I agree. I, I was doing the same, but I, <laughs> I think so. John Sexton is an incredible printer. You know, I, I just love his work. Uh, so is I think John. Uh, I th yeah, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> I I think John. Um, when we contacted John Sexton, I believe it was during the fire season um, also. Well, yeah, it was very stressful down there, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, he, and he's a lot more eloquent speaker. It would be a good idea to invite him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask a sacrilegious question. <clears throat> Did you, have you ever shot in color? Uh, only on iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. Um, I think so. The, the color photography, uh, no offense, uh, but people just extremely overdoing the color. You know, it look like Disneyland or something. <laughs> uh, I love when it's like very subtle, uh, you know, delicate uh, color, and then uh, few, very few photographer could do that. But uh, majority today is just go to extreme. <laughs> Yeah. Cole was very good uh, with color. Pardon me? Cole was very good with color. Yes, yes. Cole uh, Weston. Yes, Cole Weston. Yeah, and I love his couple photograph, even the, with the cows grazing and, mm -hmm. and the boat, you know, boat in the water. Uh, they are just stunning, yeah. But the problem is they fade. Yeah. They're not archival. Great. Well, thank it, everyone but, for joining But digital us. is digital is archival. <laughs> I'm not sure if all of it. Yes, <laughs> fifty years maybe. If your computer can still read whatever media it's on. <laughs> yeah. Michael, all the digital prints when 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 we have another flood oh, are right. going to disintegrate, and all the silver prints are going to float gently down the river and 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 <laughs> and uh, survive any kind of water. And well, then you can go the Robert Farber route. Yeah, they can get moldy. That's true. <laughs> my, my wife wanted to show some prints who, who she saved. I, I was planning sure. from the trash can. <laughs> no, I, I heard that you, you mentioned that I'm always shocked when Roman's, um, oh, and hi, I'm Linda. Hello. He is so, um, so, focused on each image, each print that he uh, shows that is so high quality. So he's very particular. If there's any uh, kind of defect on of a print, he it just throws it. And I mean, the defect is almost hard, probably I'm not a part, so it's hard for me to see. So sometimes I'm shocked when he said, this isn't good enough, a negative or a print. And so I'm, I'm shocked, but I know it's his focus on quality and, you know, only uh, showing his best images. But anyhow, this is the only one that I ever did say, you have, you can't throw this away because this is one of my favorite places. 
uh, that where we go hiking and it's uh, Heart Lake and it's an image that has Mount Shasta and Heart Lake and I I was so hard pressed to find why he was throwing this away and I said don't <laughs> throw it away I'm taking it so I did steal a friend but it was only this <laughs> one <laughs> I was always stealing friends just this one was something I couldn't let him discard. <laughs> Coming to stealing friend, I used to like you know Ansel Adams was a story too that people go to his trash can and steal the print so I, I I thought never will happen to me you know uh, so I, I just never rip him apart I threw it in my trash can and my neighbor took him out and sold him on eBay <laughs> and then uh, people uh, used to do so, that with Jay Maisel but did he sign that <laughs> Did he sign that black and white print of Mount Shasta? Oh, you're right. <laughs> Careful. You. The he never signed that invoice. You signature costs money. <laughs> Michael, you're going to cause trouble in that house, man. <laughs> hey, if, you know, if it if there's no trouble, it ain't Nuller. <laughs> <laughs> Here. <laughs> Just it back. Oh, John, you can use the mute button anytime you want. <laughs> and it was uh, funny because uh, we went to our family in Poland. And my my what's brother, -in -law. brother in law is photographed and not signed. And he says, sign it. <laughs> And, he, he, and I have to sign on the glass. <laughs> we, we have much in common because other people throw my work in the trash. <laughs> well, the, 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 the funny story was so somebody knocking to my door um, and the guy come from, I don't know, some East Coast. I don't remember Ohio or, or North Carolina and he said, I buy these images on eBay and they damage. <laughs> I'm like, why, why are you coming to me? I'm like, who did you buy? And of course, there was the guy who bought it from my neighbor next door. <laughs> and I, you know, I kind of feel bad because the guy was all veteran and I, I didn't mind. I was like, I'll replace, you know, I'll make a new print for you and do it. <laughs> and the guy was, it was such a, so happy, you know, but he flied <laughs> to all That's the same that. thing Peter B. Kaplan would have done. <laughs> That's the same thing that Peter B. Kaplan would have done. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, what would you do? You know, at that time, I was like, I, I so I, most of the time I replaced a lot of print. People bought it from all different sources, you know, and, uh, People make illegal copy and hanging in the hospital. Recently, uh, my stepson uh, discovered this whole hospital in Concord. Uh, uh, it was decorated, Kaiser Hospital was decorated with all my work. It was illegal copy from a very bad copy too. <laughs> wow, that's Over right, that's right. <laughs> Did but, you go after them? If not, we have people we can send you to to help. It's kind of sad, but also, you know, I'm glad that people love the images. You know? oh. Well, is there anything else anyone wants to cover today? Yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm still intrigued by the, uh, the Lithuania and and <laughs> you, what your your family your family uh, also came from Lithuania. Uh, my grandfather. Um, my grandfather was officer in the Polish army and we went and kicked the Russian almost all of it to the Kiev, well not we, he did. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, so free a lot of part of Russia uh, and, um, and Lithuania was freed by Polish army, which the Russian never forgive it to the Polish people, Polish right. army for that. Um, so then he stayed as an officer, he stayed in uh, Vilnius uh, and lived for a while there. And what, uh, in Vilnius? Yeah, in Vilnius, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's my connection to it. Um, and uh, and I don't know where my grandmother, she was Jewish, but I know we don't know what, where the roots come from uh, exactly. It's very difficult uh, because we don't have a, her birthday day. Um, so it's very difficult to establish um, where shoe roots coming from. 
but the, um, so my fa my grandfathers gave me stamps from uh, Lvov, that time was Lvov called, not Vilnius. Um, uh, so Vilno, I'm confusing now, called Vilno, not Vilnius. Um, so he sent me stamps and when I was little, I was like, where's this country, you know? Uh, because it didn't exist. Uh, it, it was so kind of mythical, you know? I say, like, what are you talking about? This is a stamps from the country I cannot find on the map. Uh, so then I always was uh, want to go and see that city, you know? And, and uh, after the first time I went, uh, the Russian destroyed, you know, so neglected, so horrible looking. Now the Vilnius is, 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 is a beautiful city. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful to go and see it. Um, it's incredible architecture. Yeah. If you yeah. go online and type in your name uh, 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 for Google in Lithuania, you may find relatives. I found relatives from, from my family uh, who came from Russia and Lithuania. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, 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 I found relatives. <laughs> and, and, and I was able to um, uh, certify that they were relatives because they had the same or similar pictures of the family that, uh, that my grandfather brought here when they left Lithuania back mm -hmm. in like uh, uh, 1914. Yeah, we, um, my grandmother was a Meichler and then uh, so we go uh, to Germany, you know. So um, I was uh, always afraid to do DNA because I, I figured out maybe I'm not Polish and I'm German. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I, it's always when you're getting old, you, it's a good idea to get back to your roots and figure out where your grandparents and parents come. And it's, it's, it's interesting. And when we travel, actually, Linda, I rarely talk to the people, but Linda talks to everybody. We just meet the people who just did it. You know, they just travel to find the roots where the grandparents and parents, we actually drive with some friend, Linda met to the home where the grandparents live. Really? In the, uh, which country was that? Uh, Latvia. Latvia, yeah. Um, so, so, so funny, American from, from uh, we met them and they, we just, one, one day we, we just drive and follow the routes. Um, so they find a home where the grandparents live. It was quite an interesting experience. Very nice, very nice. Cool. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Roman, is there any last thing you want to mention or bring up? No, I think so. It's time for the glass of wine. <laughs> Sounds good. So, Sounds good. Just a quick question. Yeah. Roman alluded to something about retiring you yeah think, yeah, uh, yeah you think uh, you're gonna retire yes because uh, uh i'm i'm thinking uh if, if it's getting that that's horrible in our country i probably move to netherlands or somewhere <laughs> <laughs> we, i always love one little island um we in linda windsurfing and um if I go to that, I can't printing. So, and uh, somebody that's interesting approaches my negative. So when I sell my negatives, I will be unable to print. Um, so, it well, make sure you scan them before you uh, sell them. Uh, my my steps are always telling me that uh, I'm I'm always like afraid doing that. But uh, maybe the Mac can help you. Mac could do Mac. that for you. I know. <laughs> Maybe a good idea to protect from fire too. You know. Yes. Yes. All right. Cool. Well, thank, thank you all. Thank you very much for joining me. It was, it was uh, thank you. Very pleased. Yeah. Good to see you, Roman. Well, thank you. Roman, thank you very much. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. That was great. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. Hope to see you soon. Ha, <laughs> ha.